This is maybe one of the worst teams I've ever seen, and because of that, I absolutely love it. Like, imagine if you're Alejandro and you see Nate on the free battle spot, you're thinking that is the freest win from the most in-game team ever. But nah, these Pokemon can be dangerous. Like, and also, like, Nate's team blows my mind, because I can't even figure out what is supposed to happen with it. You know, even when people are using, like, very uncommon Pokemon, there's, like, some kind of strategy. There's an idea, just like, okay, you can piece that together and do that, and then maybe the team will come together. But that is, like, the most eclectic team of, quote-unquote, bad Pokemon I've ever seen. So let's go and watch it win. Alright, and it's against the Rayquaza. Doubles, making things a little fancy. Gyarados with the Intimidate. Might affect the Garbodor. I think it wants to do physical damage sometimes, maybe. Uh, but that's going to be a withdraw from the Gyarados on onto Blaziken. So yeah, just put Blaziken on the field with the um, Mega Rayquaza. And that's how you win battles. That's what Alejandro is going for right now. But we are about to see where this where the strategy goes to the next level. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in what could happen here. So Rayquaza with the Delta Stream. So I'm guessing... Are we going to see, like, a string shot? I was about to say, I'm, I'm guessing we're going to see a string shot. You know, just cut the speed in half, get Garbodor doing something, and then survive the first turn because you got Focus Sash on the Galvantula, and Garbodor's got some tank in his little live. Garbodor will be fine. So yeah, Galvantula takes the Dragon Claw, drop down to one hit point. That's what we see right there. And the Poison Gas. Got it. All right. That, that is, I love Poison Gas too, like, I, I think that made my top 7 most unappreciated, or like, underused, or Pokemon moves that you should use more, because it poisons both opponents! You're just dealing 1 8 to both opponents, and you can combo it out just like that. So now, setting up the Sticky Web, so all the next Pokemon that come in are going to be slowed down as well. Garbodor with the Toxic Spikes, we have a lot of Poison set up going in right now. And this is something you usually don't see in doubles, again! You watch this team in doubles, it's like, who's going to waste time using entry hazards in doubles? Who's using up all of this setup? You know, you see Stealth Rocks in doubles, you're immediately like, oh, that's, that's not going to work out. Now, Sticky Web does have a bit more of, like, a credibility to it. You can see that actually doing something, but I like what's going on right here. So we have Poison on the income. We got Poison Gas just spreading around the hate. And then we got Sticky Web, and everything's going to be slow while the opponents are taking away at health on Poison, and Garbodor's still alive. So Blaziken with the speed boost, going to get a little problematic, but not the worst thing. And now Line Noon comes in, so how do we set up the Line Noon? This is a really interesting setup. So Line Noon's going to protect. It's going to let Garbodor do its thing, apparently. And the explosion! Okay! That's, that's the setup right there, guys. You use the Focus Sash to buy time, Garbodor explodes, the opponent's field in theory would be wiped, but I guess after the Intimidate, not gonna be as good. Uh, the Rayquaza, just, yeah, I, f I would have expected more, more damage from a Pokemon using Explosion, but maybe it's not about the KO, you know? Poison's still ticking down, damage is happening. What it's really about is Linoon Ambipom. I'm waiting on that Linoon Ambipom. We just have so much animation going on. It's like, alright, there, there's your speed boost, let's get that out of the way. Ambipalm comes in, Ambipalm's got that fake out, so I mean, Rayquaza, that's not dead. Dude, wh where's all the damage? I would expect a lot more damage to be going down off that fake out from the Ambipalm. Rayquaza gets flinched, though. Poison's gonna hit. And then Gyarados is back in, so now the Intimidate. That's gonna make Ambipalm do even less damage. Like, this setup is just, it has me completely intrigued right now. The opponent switches out Rayquaza, I guess, doesn't want to risk it. Um, yeah, Ambipalm's still a little threatening, still can be a little threatening. As Gengar comes in to respond to these normal-type Pokemon. Sticky Web's going to make Gengar's speed drop right now. Oh, man. Ra Razor Fang Fling, that's how you do it. Fling's Rock, as it is called, but Razor Fang, effectively the same thing. Line Noon! There's the Fling's Rock, guys! Alright, so Gengar is a Poison-type Pokemon, absorbs the Toxic Spikes. I guess, again, it's just a part of the stall strap. Ambipalm with the pickup, going to fi- Wait! Wait! You can do that? But... Uh, that- How do you- Wait! No! Okay? Like, how do you- 
how does this exist in the game? How is how has this not been spammed everywhere? How, how is this not? Yeah, I want to say words, but I can't find the words because it's obvious. It's free. Is this a change in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon? Is this like an undocumented change? Because I thought I thought pickup had no use in battle, but I guess it, it, it's used for found moves. Ambi Palm and Ambi Palm's finding the King's Rock. So is that the side effect that fling or that pickup picks up an item that the opponent or that the Pokemon didn't use? And like Noon and uh, Ambipalm, those are some fast Pokemon too. So as long as you keep those out, and that's why you have the sticky web, so you just outspeed everything. That's why you have the poison spikes, because as you can see, these Pokemon aren't doing damage. But when everything's poisoned and losing an eighth of its health every time, <laughs> and Game Freak decides to nerf confusion and evasion when this is happening in their game. Everything else was just a farce and like that's why I was like, oh, the Ami Palm should be here to do damage. It doesn't care about doing damage. It doesn't need to do the damage. What is this? I mean, the battle's not gonna progress because yeah, poison Pokemon came in, the spikes got cleared, and then there's also flying Pokemon that make it a little hard to get these entry hazards to stick. But it's a, it's a permanent flinch. The only way around it is with an inner focus Pokemon or something faster, I guess. And I bet there's maybe a way of getting around that. that. You know, you play around the other Pokemon just right, and then you make it work. Uh, Blaziken would suck, though. If Blaziken uh, wasn't dead, because then it just outspeeds. You know, it gains a speed boost over everything. It, it keeps getting flinched, but every time it gets flinched, it gets one step closer to outspeeding. <laughs> this is the silliest thing I've ever seen in Pokemon! Because... It, the, the funny thing about it is like we're watching a battle replay so the battle's going by faster and it's just back and forth it just whoop 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 I could say that for like the next 10 minutes and give you guys an accurate accurate breakdown of what's happening here <laughs> what is happening here okay so have you ever heard those weird conspiracy theories where people say like two dimensional bubbles touched and the timelines got all crisscrossed and stuff i think the most uh common example is like the baron stain bears versus the baron stein bears that people always like remember the spelling in different ways than it actually portrays in reality or something like th there's a weird timeline screwiness going on because i feel like my entire life up until this moment has been lived in an alternate timeline where pickup did jack Forever like that generation five generation five change. What is no this, this never received a change in generation five pickup never did anything Except get you items after battle. I I've been on this page Dozens of times because hey, I I know this this all sounds right I can get a rare candy and I can get some cool items and stuff I've looked at pickup tables in the last two generations but apparently it's had an effect and where where is this where is the cheesy japanese player on the battle spot that is making someone's life a living hell right now with this strategy how have i not seen it i've never seen anyone use pickup competitively even for some other cool strat and also it looks like my hunch was uh, correct at the end of the turn in which another pokemon used a one-time use item so another pokemon so it doesn't get to pick up its own item but that's why you just do the double, like those two Pokemon are perfect for it. Fast Pokemon that can fling rock or bling shenanigans with the pickup and they don't get in each other's way and you create just the ultimate lockdown. So all of that setup that was building up to, apparently worth building up to because it all, it all went somewhere and it all made sense. But what is this? This doesn't exist. So what happens? A Pokemon will pick up, will collect an item if they're not holding anything. If more than one Pokemon is pick up or harvest, the faster Pokemon will restore an item first. If multiple items can be collected, the Pokemon will collect them in the item most recently consumed. So it looks like the strategy is at least mortal. That if a Citrus Berry is used, I think that's kind of it. Like the Citrus Berry becomes the most recently used item after the damage. Therefore, Citrus Berry would get picked up instead. But I feel like it also goes in like an order chain. That it just kind of resolves backwards. So then someone is still going to be able to get the flinch item. And then maybe if the Pokemon like does the flinch. A pickup can still activate. So I mean you're still getting like potential flinch combos. Regardless once that extra item has been consumed or something. I don't know. Pickup will not activate more than once per turn. 
I hope not, because there's pro there'd probably be some stupid combo where you, like, infinitely heal or infinite something, and the game just absolutely shatters. Uh, pick up, cannot collect items that have been destroyed with incinerate, bug bite, pluck, knocked off and knock off, popped air balloon, cannot be collected, and then we just have fling, natural gift. It all works! It all checks out! But I swear that that is not how life existed before I recorded this video. Let's get into the next battle. Huh. I don't even know what to say. I... I don't even know what to say. It's going to be the same setup. It's going to be the same stupidity. We're just going to watch a more efficient battle, I imagine. That's kind of how I see this one going because, oh, there's not going to be, like, as weird as it was with the poison. Like, it's going to be poison into flinch, and the opponent is hacking, and a hacker doesn't deserve... Like, this... Okay, cool. Cool. This is, this is their own personal hell that they've created for themselves through hacking. That, that by hacking, they, they absolutely deserve to be caught in an infinite flinch. To never experience joy in Pokemon ever again. Ugh. I, I don't want to talk any... You know what, guys? I've only done this, like, one or two other times in Fan Fries before. But I'm just going to shut up. I'm going to turn off the background music. I'm going to kick on the battle music. I don't care how loud it gets. I'll balance this in, in post. I'm not going to say anything. And we're just gonna watch. Cause I don't, my commentary can't add anything to this anymore. Pickup doesn't do this, but it does. So enjoy. I wasn't paying attention that are these Pokemon set to steal items because the citrus berry the one thing that would stop the strategy just got stolen by the Garbodor holy crap 